Welcome to our Freebie Friday video. It's Shade here. Um, we've been asked today to talk a little bit about reverse mortgages. And that uh, reverse mortgages are a type of mortgage, but not as common as the traditional mortgages because only a few people will qualify for them. And um, they're pretty much uh, for elderly people to help them to, to convert the equity in their home into cash while they're still alive and they can use that for uh, their household expenses and also for medical bills. But they can use it for pretty much anything they want. So a reverse mortgage is called a reverse mortgage because instead of uh, the homeowner paying uh, the mortgage lender every month for a loan that they, they took out, the lender is paying the homeowner every month or paying them a lump sum amount up front um, as a loan uh, guaranteed against their home. So that's because they have equity in the home and the lenders can see that. And so they will give an amount, uh, they usually do a percentage of the equity in that home and they're able to give cash outright or pay every month at the option of the homeowner. If you wanna pay, uh, if you wanna collect cash up front, you'll collect cash up front. Uh, and if you want a monthly annuity to be paid out, then they'll do it monthly. Or you can do a combination of both sometimes. And uh, you have to be 62 years old to be able to qualify for, for this kind of loan. And you have to have your, uh, that property as your primary residence, I believe. And uh, you have to have equity in the property. And they'll send an appraiser out to do all of that to make sure everything is um, in place. Once you get that loan, then the lender will pay you. And then you don't have to pay anything back until death. So when there's the death of the homeowner, the heirs can choose to pay uh, the loan back, uh, the balance of the loan, or they can choose to keep the property um, or deed over the property to the lender. So when they're choosing to keep the property, that means they have to pay the loan back. If they choose to walk away, they will just give the keys back to the lender. So it's called a deed in lieu of foreclosure or they could actually sell it on the private market and then pay off the loan. So there are several options for the heirs. If the homeowner has a spouse that's surviving uh, the homeowner, then the spouse has a right to stay in that home also until death and the loan keeps going on. If um, the bank decides to do a foreclosure and the heirs don't fight it, then the foreclosure will go forward and the bank will take whatever it can get at foreclosure and it cannot ask for anything more above that amount. If the lender doesn't have any bids at the foreclosure auction and the property is taken back by the lender, the lender can only take the property because it's a non-recourse loan. They cannot go for anything above and beyond the value of that property itself. So sometimes the heirs would uh, do a strategic move and allow it to go to foreclosure. Um, and it really just depends on the situation. You have to figure out what's best. Um, while the homeowner is alive, the homeowner gets payments or gets a lump sum, as I said before, but the homeowner is still responsible for the property taxes and also to maintain the homeowner's insurance on the property and keep it in good repair. So those are some conditions that the, the lenders will look at to make sure that the homeowner can afford um, those kinds of costs, at least, in order to be able to maintain the loan. And those are the only things that the homeowner is required to do. And uh, when the that homeowner passes away, if the heirs want to negotiate and pay off the loan they have six months to make up their mind and if they still cannot figure out what they want to do or they cannot uh, find financing within those six months the heirs can actually ask for a 90-day extension um, and they can ask for that two times so essentially they have a whole year in which they can decide whether they want to keep the property and pay off the loan and um, any kind of difference between the value of the home and the amount that is worth and the amount that the loan is worth now, that will be covered by the federal mortgage insurance that's available for those kinds of loans, for the reverse mortgages. So for instance, if somebody borrowed $200,000 and the property is now only worth $50,000, um, the bank can only ask for $50,000 from the heirs. Um, actually, a little less than that is how the math is worked. Is 95% is what they can ask for, or they can sell it at auction or um, take the property back and if they can only get 50000 for it, they cannot turn around and ask for the remaining $150,000 because it's a non-recourse loan. They only get up to the value of the property itself. So that's how reverse mortgages work and I'll 
do another video for you next week. We'll look forward to more questions. And I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Happy Friday. Thank you.